Hi friends, it's Eric here. Let's talk about fans. I want to talk a little bit about FE, potential INFJs, um, my failings in FE departments, and uh, I've sort of had a very interesting battle today with. Northern Goshawk. Uh, and he has played on a couple of occasions some um, general F.E. olive branches during the course of the fight that normally I would probably take, but um, I had too much shit going on at once. I had comments coming in, fast and furious, and I was fighting battles on two fronts. I was fighting the determinism battle, and I was fighting the uh, evolution battle. Um, the determinist was much less interesting than Northern Goshawk because. He was just less less tricky, you know. He was just a lot less tricky. Um, I didn't really have very strong arguments. The determinist. Northern Ghost Shark was slippery. Um, but my takeaway from it basically was I need to stop doing that kind of stuff in general as best I can. Or I need to, I need to reduce it. Um... I don't always have to battle. You know, I just... I... I usually like it. I'm accustomed to it. But... I don't need to make people hate me. And... Really, that's what I'm doing. When I have a haughty tone or otherwise present myself as the gauge of all knowing as Kimberly says then I have FE problems the thing is and I think it's important for other people to remember this because at the end of this exchange with Northern Ghost Shark, apparently, possibly anyway, I uh, missed one of his comments at the, towards the beginning of the chain. And apparently he, he ref, apparently he talked about uh, um, I'm freaking tired. Push rate equilibrium in that comment. Now, I had, I was independently familiar with it before I even started researching, but sort of, I, I got the concept of it, but I didn't, uh, I didn't remember the details. I didn't Google it directly, though. I Googled something else, and I found it in an article, and I was like, ah, there, that thing. But, um, what's interesting is... We sort of stopped fighting before we made up, you know, or attempted to, uh, and, um, so I'm going to say here, I, just, I, I guess I'm just fucking tired and, and shagged out following a prolonged squawk. Um, so I asked Kimberly today to give me advice about FE stuff, what I should do to, to do a better job with FE. And the first like, couple pieces of advice she gave were about structuring videos differently, like being more on point, organized, purposeful, and not so rambly. Which... I get and I understand that, but that really wasn't what I was asking her for. I was asking her about likability concerns and, you know, her primary uh, complaint 
has been that uh, I'm too self-aggrandizing. The thing is, um, a bit of a bone of contention between her and me because I see it as at least somewhat an issue of with her specifically anyway of her not being adequately affirmational herself so it's like well if my partner's not going to affirm me I guess I'm going to have to affirm myself to try to convince her that I'm worth affirming regardless that's a separate issue but if, you know I think that it applies the, the overblown affirmation applies here as well as in my home uh, there's sometimes a reason though why I feel like uh, why I, I kind of am like the gauge of all knowing not that I has to be perceived that way from other people but rather that it's important to remember why I know so many things and can argue so many things so well. It's basically because of my job. Because the thing is, when I come up with case strategies for given topics, I like to run squirrely shit. I like to run crazy shit that the opponents are never gonna have heard of before. Whatever I can find. That's how I ran Fractal Universe. I was trying to find some something crazy to run. I don't even remember how I came across it, but I read up on it. And I also ran sea otters. And the sea otter case for climate change was that we can we don't need to cap emissions because we've got a solution. We'll just breed and dump sea otters into the ocean, and they'll eat the things that eat the kelp, and the kelp will absorb a lot of the CO two. And because that was an actual idea hatched in Santa Cruz um, and you know made it into the environmental science journals or whatever if I can use it nobody knew what to do with it <laughs> uh, I also got researching for climate change the idea that the the curve of the relationship between more emissions and more warming might not be linear and probably isn't, and that there's not clear consensus on the the nature of that curve. So it could be diminishing returns, in which case it doesn't. It, every addition, additional pound of carbon goes into the atmosphere it doesn't cause one pound of damage. Just diminishing returns, it, co it causes less and less and less and less damage. So all the damage that can be done, ninety nine percent is already done in that context. In the other way, you go, oh, but it could be accelerating returns. The greenhouse effect. We've talked about the accelerating returns as a possibility, but nobody talks about diminishing returns as a possibility. So there, I found out a journal article that discussed why it might be diminishing returns and um, ran that. Now, I'm not a client, climate scientist, but I know a lot about climate science. And I'm not an evolutionary biologist, but I know a lot about evolution as well. Not because I researched it specifically for debate, though. That one is more like, I don't know where I learned various things. I learned a lot today researching it more, but um, there certainly are areas of science where I'm weaker. The harder sciences that have less to do with policy, I'm going to be weaker at. But you know, I ran the Nation K with Grace in Lincoln Douglas, where she... She, the basic core of the argument was that my opponent is using the word nation as though it were an object of analysis, but it's not an object of analysis. It is instead a rhetorical device. And we ran linguistics-based arguments from, about illocution and locution and stuff like that. All of which I had to learn 
for to make the case. It, it, it's like I just have I have ideas for what. Well, I need something that says basically something like this, and then I'll just sort of Google those expressions and uh, find a find scholarly ar articles about. It. I go to Google Scholar usually for debate work. So I know about shit tons of stuff, and the other thing about being in debate and coaching debate and stuff is that you learn better than anything really from the process how to find the evidence you're looking for like how to scan articles and and gain the necessary information sometimes I sit, sit in and plow into it heavy like fully read it um, if it's if it looks like it's rich with potential, you know, if there's a lot of good stuff in there. Usually I'm scanning for something specific, though. I know how to look for warrants, you know. Um, so, don't... Make, make no mistake about it that... I'm not talking from a place of full expertise about things. But also, don't make the mistake of thinking I'm talking on my ass. If I'm talking about it, and I'm affirming and negating something, I know quite a bit more than you might think about it. I, otherwise, I wouldn't bother arguing. I mean... Of course, it depends on the frame of the argument. It depends on how limited of claims I'm making. That's that's an important factor, too. I won't typically make claims that uh, I can't substantiate or feel like, feel like I can't win in some regard. Sometimes I do. But, you know, I bounced evolution stuff around in my head for a while before I started really talking about it. I've, I've suspected for years that it was bullshit, but I never really committed to the idea. For Christ's sake. Hello? Yes? Yes? Good night. Kim and I are fighting again, of course. Difficult woman. I'm a difficult man, I guess, too. So... For whatever reason, or however played out, other than Go Shock, uh, was the one who suggested that I didn't see his first comment. And I was like, well, that's certainly possible. And, um, it's an easy enough way out of the battle, you know? I, I don't. I don't remember seeing and you mentioned that, but you might have. Um, it's interesting the FE that goes into that exchange where he's like, he could be lying. Yeah. I wouldn't waste lying on that. There's. There's a, there he is. We're going to meet on Monday. Okay, cool. Right on. Um, interesting heavy exchange. And of course, I didn't know it was that guy. I didn't know he was the guy that was going to meet on Monday until just like a few minutes before I made the video. I'm like, oh, you're that guy? <coughs> Which is probably why you wanted to make peace. He's like, 
fuck, I gotta meet with this dude, and he's gonna be all like, we're gonna be all fighting. And, but I wouldn't, you know me, I forget about shit pretty quick, pretty quick and easy. I, uh, I don't give a fuck. I've had so many of these kind of battles, they don't, they don't really stick to me too much. <laughs> That was pretty cool, huh? Look, it can go on its own. It's a it's a self removing headband. <laughs> a ghost! Oh my god, a ghost took off my headband. <laughs> okay. That's enough of this video. Well, I, there was stuff I wanted to say, but I'm just like fucking tired and stoned and not not up to much accomplishing of anything of quality, I guess. If only they understood sport. <laughs>